In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a couple more functions that help us deal with null values. And they're called if null. And just to make things confusing, there's one called null if. And then finally, there's another one called coalesce. Here's how if null works. Basically, it takes it has two expressions, and it's going to return the first one that's not null. So if expression one is not null, then we're going to grab it or use it. And if it is null, then we'll go to expression two. Okay. Um, here's my example. I want to uh, take a look at the books table, retail. There's a discount column, but that column has a lot of null values in it. And I want to take the retail price and subtract the discount to get a new price. So when I run that from the, just the books table, here's what I get. There's the retail price, the discount. I subtract them and I get a new number. But if the discount's null, remember, null, a null marker, as it's called, we don't know what it means, and so it's not zero. So basically, uh, the database can't do math with it, so it just puts in a null value for my new price. So what I want to happen is if the discount's null, let's substitute in a zero so that I can continue the math. So what that looks like is retail minus, and now I'm using my if null function. And remember, it only has two expressions, one and two. If this guy has a number in it, we'll use it. If the discount's null, well, then we'll run over to the expression 2 and use it instead. So now, when I run this for the new price, here we go. I get my 28.45. Now we're just subtracting 0, basically. And here I'm subtracting the 450. And so, but at least I'm able to fill that column with a, a value for my new price. So that's if null, easy to use. Um, I'm going to jump down to coalesce because it is very similar to if null. The difference is it's not limited to two choices. Basically, you can put comma separated um, values, if you will, and it will return the first non null value out of that list. So if I were to select this example, it's kind of like if null. Notice it returned a 1 because the first value was null, the second one was a 1. In this second example, I went null, null, 2. Well, of course, it's going to return the first non-null value. So how can we use that? In the orders table of the books database, sometimes the ship date is null. So what we're saying is if the ship state's null, well, then let's put in today's date. So when I select that, it doesn't run because it's actually ship date, not shipped. So let's get rid of the ED here. There we go. So now when I run that, what we're going to get is the ship date. But if I sort this, notice when I have the null dates, well, now we're putting in today's date in place of that. And maybe you want a third option. So I could come up here and maybe I'll put in the ship date. If not that, there might be an order date. And if that should be null, then we'll put in the current date. Right? I mean, I can add a list of columns and it will return the first one that's not null. So coalesce and if null are very similar. Just coalesce add, allows a longer list, if you will, where if null is just expression one, expression two. In, in my example right here, I could have used an if null because I only got two things going on. Finally, let's go to this third one. It's kind of weird. It's called null if. And basically, again, you have expression one and two. But all it's asking is if they're equal, if they have the same values, the whole function is going to return a null. If the values are different, it returns expression 1. So here's how I'm using this one. Remember, obviously, in the books table, we have a retail column, right? Well, in the order items table, we have a paid each. And what I'm curious about is, do we have instances where the retail price is different than what the customer is paying? If the prices are the same, this is going to return null. If they're not the same, it's going to return the retail uh, price. Here we go. I'm looking for the book ISBN, the retail, the paid, from books, join order items. So first we start out running that, and here we go. The retail and the paid each are the same, so that function returns null. Here we have a case where the retail is different than the paid each, I think because of the discount. And so what it returned was the retail price, the first value out of that null if. 
Here we're all the same. Here we're different. Here's another one that's different. What if I only wanted to see, I don't want to see all of them. I only want to see the ones where the customer paid different than retail. All I'd have to add to this is this where clause. And I just say where this function is not null. Because if it's null, it meant those two prices are the same. If it's not null, it means I'm returning the retail price. So now I'm only going to be looking at books where the customer paid different than what's on the, the retail. So that's null if. Basically just a way to compare two expressions. And then if it... Um, if they're equal, it's going to return null. Now, of course, you can, again, start combining these. you got to view each of these as a tool. So I could have an if null and put a null if inside of it, right? Because what does null if return if these two expressions are the same? It returns null. And so I could basically ask, well, if these two values are the same, here's what I want to show instead. So whatever. I don't have a problem to actually demonstrate that, but just be aware any one of these are... Um, Again, just a tool that we use to solve business problems and how you use them is up to your imagination.